What is up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video marks episode one of my Happy Healthy Lean series. I am so excited to be filming this series with you guys. I'm going to take you through a kind of 10 to 12 week shred. It's going to cover everything from workouts to what I'm eating to my calories and macros, what cardio I'm doing, how my body's looking as we progress through it. And I just really wanted to show you all what is involved when I shred. So for the past three years, I've actually done a bikini diva competition in the Gold Coast. And what happens is I usually lean down for May and then after the show, I go a little bit crazy again, a bit of weight after, and I end up ending the year like not in the best shape. Now it is just under 100 days until my birthday on November 29th. I've got Chicago in November. I've got Sydney in November. I have so many exciting things, not to mention summer, November, December, January here in New Zealand. So there's all these exciting things that I have to shred for and I thought I'd take you along on the journey with me. If you do enjoy this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and smile. Okay, so today I do have a whole lot of questions that came through my Instagram story when I asked you all to ask me what questions you had about my shred or about shredding in general. So I'm going to flip through as many of those as I can and I just wanted to give you kind of a little background around where I'm at right now. So I weighed in at about 62 kilos. That is only about five kilos up from my peak week or four and a half kilos really. So over the next 10 to 12 weeks, I'm estimating that I'll probably lose about four to five kilos that's about 10 to 11 pounds it's not much weight at all but on me like in the shape that I am right now that will make a massive difference very excited to do this and it'll be the first time I've ever actually documented a shred on YouTube because usually when I do like a competition prep type shred it just gets too hectic I get a little bit emotional you're tired you're hungry the last thing you want to do is get on a camera and talk to <laughs> people about how you're going. I'm going to start with a few quick fire questions. So I've got one from Sabrina. How many years young are you? I am 25 years young. I love that young, not old. And on the 29th of November, I turned 26. So I really want to go into November feeling my best, looking my best, and just glowing with health and happiness because that's my overall goal for this life anyway. So what's the hardest part about keeping fit? I think that fit, the term fit, has a different meaning for everyone. So for some people, being fit might mean having six pack abs. For others, it might be being healthy enough to run around with their kids or to take the stairs instead of the elevator. So for me personally, being fit is all about being happy, healthy, and strong. That's all I ever really want in my life. And I think that the hardest thing for me personally is consistency with nutrition. Like I am only human. I too struggle. I love lots of food. I love ice cream. And so for me, it's about really uh, controlling my portion and just making sure that I'm getting in the right nutrients that my body needs in order to live a happy and healthy lifestyle. So that's probably my biggest struggle, which is why doing a shred really challenges me because it really comes down to controlling my caloric intake and my portions. Tanya, how many days for how long each time do you train? For the past few weeks, I was doing five days a week in the gym. I was doing weightlifting and it would take about an hour to an hour and a half. That's including my warm up, my stretching, my cool down, uh, everything, my warm up sets and things like that. But right now I've actually decreased this week down to four days per week. So I'm doing Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and they are heavy sessions. So I'm doing a lot of five by five, like strength type training, and I'm loving it so far. But in saying that I'm on like day three and today was a rest day. So, so far I'm loving it, two days in. <laughs> Why have you decreased your training frequency? I was doing a lot of kind of muscle endurance type training for the past few weeks, which was a higher volume. And so now it's time for me to just really focus on strength and only go to the gym four times a week for weight training, but make sure that in those four sessions, I'm really pushing it and really challenging myself. But in saying that, just as important as weight training is recovery. Our bodies 
just need time to build, recover, repair from the training because essentially like you are really challenging your body in the gym when you're lifting those heavy weights and we just need to make sure that our bodies have time to actually repair and recover adequately. Amanda, do you take protein supplements very often? This is a great question. So a lot of people will message me and they'll say that they struggle to eat enough protein and a few things to note on this is one, how much protein are you eating? Because I feel like a lot of people set their protein goals way too high and so they're struggling to actually hit them. Whereas me personally, like right now, I'm on 120 grams of protein per day. I find that so easy to hit that I definitely don't need protein powder. Like I get enough protein from my foods, like from my bread, from my oats, from my meat, from my edamame bean pasta, all these different foods all add up towards that 120 grams of protein. I don't really need protein powder. However, I have this ice cream protein coffee smoothie that I really like and that's about 11 grams of protein as well. If I am going to use a protein powder it's only 10 to 15 grams in a smoothie or if I'm in a rush I might have a protein shake but I primarily get most of my protein from the foods that I eat as opposed to supplements. During your shred how many percentage calorie deficit do you set at first? So during a shred what I usually do is I'll take my calories down by a couple of hundred from where I was previously. So if I'm at 2,200 calories and I'm maintaining at that, all I'm gonna do is just take away one to 200 calories and see how I go for a week. If my weight is continuously decreasing, then there's no need for me to continue decreasing my calories because at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is to shred on calories as high as possible with the least amount of cardio. So I'm really focusing on my strength training and keeping my calories as high as possible. So currently I'm on 1,900 calories for four days a week and then 2,020 calories for three days a week. And I don't usually share my exact macro split and my amount of calories that I'm on, but for this shred and for the YouTube fam, I'm going to do it. I just want to stress to you that it makes no sense for you to try and copy what I'm doing or what anyone else is doing with their nutrition because we're all so different. Like you might have more muscle than me. You might be shorter than me. You might be taller than me. We might have different day jobs that allow us to eat less or more calories than one or the other. So it's just important to make sure that you get your calories calculated to you to your goals and your lifestyle june 12,000 steps is that running or walking do you recommend one or the other so on my instagram i posted that my goals for the week are 12,000 steps this is totally a personal goal for me so usually I try and walk 10,000 steps every single day throughout the year even on my rest days I just truly believe that our bodies are designed to move and I just get so like I guess I get itchy feet like sitting down all day working so I really try and set myself a goal of hitting the same amount of steps every day for me it's about consistency it's about habit it's about really monitoring my daily activities so that I have an understanding of roughly how many calories I'm burning across the week because if you're like doing 20,000 steps one day but then you're kind of doing 8,000 steps the next or 2,000 steps on a Sunday you're not really controlling your calorie burn across the week so I try and keep it quite consistent throughout the week and I decided I would kick things up a little bit now and do 12,000 steps a day I don't recommend this for anyone else like 10,000 steps is more than enough but uh, this is just my tread and my journey and I want to take you on that so I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing. Following on from that she had said you know is it running or walking and it's all walking. I don't run for the mere fact that one I don't like running and two I feel like my legs get enough hammering in the gym the last thing I need to be doing is running but in saying that my walk is probably like some people's slow jog because I walk like really fast. <laughs> Other than lifting, what are the other exercise or physical activity you do? Run, swim, or cycle? So I actually love biking. I credit my legs to being built from a lot of biking when I was younger. I love biking outdoors, but now living in the city, I don't feel like it's the safest. I also don't have a bike right now. So I just walk everywhere. I pretty much love lifting weights. And then if I do have time to go out and about, I'll go walking around the park or I'll go hiking. I love hiking, especially when I'm on holidays and there's like new sights to see. So other than that, I like am not very good at swimming. 
Do you live close to a gym? What's your travel time slash distance? A lot of people ask me this and I actually live very close to the gyms. I walk to the gym and it probably takes me no more than I'd say five minutes to get there which is an, like an amazing thing because I understand that a lot of people really struggle to get to the gym if it's a little bit further away. So for those of you that do have that struggle, I really recommend like waking up early in the morning, making sure that your gym bag's packed, your outfit's ready to go so that you can wake up, roll out of bed, grab your work gear, grab your gym bag, head straight to the gym, go to the gym and then shower there and head to work after that. So that just cuts out a lot of backwards and forwards time. And I know that if people go home after going to work, sometimes they'll decide that they don't wanna go back to the gym. So if you're someone that likes to train after work, make sure that you have your gym gear ready to go so you can go straight from work to the gym and then home to eat and chill out for the night. Losing motivation to go to the gym at least two times a week. What's the best way to stay motivated? So motivated is a kind of word that comes up every now and again in my direct messages and I just want to let you know that not everyone feels motivated all the time. I know I don't, especially when it comes down to shredding. Like, there's gonna be times when you just wanna eat the whole tub of ice cream or where you don't wanna go to the gym because it's raining outside or you're tired, you're hungry. All these different kind of excuses that come up in life that can lead you feeling unmotivated. But the thing is, it's not motivation that's gonna get you to your goals. Motivation might get you fired up, it might get you to write your goals down, but it's consistent consistency, good habits, and commitment to your goals that will get you to the gym each and every day that you need to. I really want you to realize that motivation's kind of fleeting, it'll come and go. What matters most is that you have a clear why for why you're doing this. Like, why do you wanna lose weight? Is it so that you can run around with your kids? Is it so that you can rock your wedding dress on your special day? Figure out that clear why, write down your goals, create a plan on how to achieve it, and then commit to it. Every single day, just work on ticking off certain things like 10,000 steps, drinking three to four liters of water, uh, tracking your calories and macros, tick off these things each and every day and all these small habits that you're working on will eventually add up and all take you closer to that bigger goal of you know wearing that wedding dress or hiking up Mount Everest. Whatever your goal is, just make sure that you have a clear understanding of why you want to achieve it and visualize every day like how good it's gonna feel when you actually achieve it because you're not always gonna feel motivated and no one is. Like even all the people you follow online, they're not always motivated and sometimes they're gonna have down days but what matters most is that they don't give up and that they keep going. And if I can do it, I know you can too. Ness, how do you handle bad cravings leading up to period time? Oh my gosh. Girl, I feel ya. So, I completely understand that. I just want you all to know that it is 110% natural to get increased hunger and increased cravings around that time of the month. I usually actually get intense hunger about two days before my period's due, and then two days later I'll be like, oh, that's why I was hungry. It's normal due to the hormones in our body to make us crave more food, and it's also due to an increase in our metabolic rate around that time of the month. So just know that it's totally normal, but there are ways to handle it. I know that if I'm going to be getting my period around the same time each month, the weekend before, I make sure that I have some sweet treats that I can track into my calories to help me stay on track. So that might be low calorie jelly, uh, sugar-free hot chocolate, popcorn, uh, all these kind of like under 100 calorie treats that I can fit into my calories that won't leave me feeling bloated or guilty or lead me to binge on them like mm, something like Oreos or a tub of ice cream or a whole chocolate bar. So try and find kind of like lower calorie based treats that you can eat and enjoy that can satisfy that craving but not uh, kind of take you over an excessive amount of calories. And the other thing is to just be kind to yourself. Like if you do slip up, just know that Everyone does it and it happens from time to time, so don't stress. Try and get a better plan in place for the next time that those period cravings hit ya. Also, stay tuned for my next episode of this shredding series because I will be posting my top five snacks that are all under 100 calories, so hopefully that helps you as well. Beth, how did you learn so much about fitness and nutrition? Did you get a degree for it? So, I actually have a degree in business management, majoring in accounting. My background was music, but when 
when I went to university, I needed some stress relief. I started going to the gym. I started reading everything you can imagine online. I started reading research papers, journals, uh, blogs, whatever, you name it. And then I just got so hooked on it that I decided to study with ISSA. So I got my PT certificate through ISSA in the USA. What should I do if I'm losing my period while on a cut? Honestly, this is a very common thing. So I've actually posted on Instagram about losing my period during my last competition prep leading up to my May show. I was fortunate enough to only lose it for two months because straight after my competition, I increased my fats and increased my calories to really try and bring it back. Like it is not healthy to lose your period and it's a sign that you need to tweak something if you are losing it. So first things first, I would go and speak to a doctor, get checked, make sure that everything's okay there. And then I would look at having a play around with your macros or speaking to a nutritionist that is more specialized in women's hormones and that side of things. Me personally, all it took was just increasing my calories, increasing my body fat and increasing my fat macros because fats are really important for hormones as well. What protein powder brand do you use? So the two brands that I like to use are Blessed, which is a vegan pea-based protein. I personally don't like it just mixed with water because it is vegan. It's a lot thicker than other proteins, but I love it in a smoothie. So I'll put up my favorite smoothie recipe here as well as my coffee smoothie here. Both of these are absolutely delicious. And then when it comes to other protein powders, of course I don't really need them. But if I am going to use a protein powder, I'll use the EHP Labs Isopep. So this is a hydrolyzed way. You take it straight after a workout to help your muscles recover and repair. And then the other one is Oxyway. So Oxyway tastes delicious in oats. It tastes really good in smoothies. It tastes awesome with water. Uh, both of those proteins are fine, but I would probably choose Oxyway just because of its versatility and being able to use it in smoothies, baking, and many other things, as opposed to isopeptas, mainly a hydrolyzed way, which is best taken straight after a workout. Amy, how do you calculate macros for fat loss if you feel you've plateaued or metabolism is bad? What will happen with a caloric plateau? Usually, when people have been trying to lose fat for a long time, they'll be decreasing the calories and eventually they get to a point where they've already maxed out their cardio, they've maxed out the lowest amount of calories that they can be eating, but they're not losing any weight and their body's just adapted to it. And you can't do anything from there because you can't increase your cardio and you can't decrease your calories any further. So what I would do here is suggest a reverse diet. This means slowly tapering back your cardio and slowly increasing your calories. And it can be scary to think of increasing your calories and taking back your cardio, but you have to think of your overall health first. So you start to take your calories back, start to slowly increase your calories and try and really focus on changing your mindset from how you look to becoming healthy, becoming stronger and to actually enjoying your workout and your nutrition. So as you slowly start to increase your calories, you might find that you actually start to drop weight, shred some fat and shape your body even more as well as getting stronger in the gym and having more energy. So once you've reversed your calories up to maintenance, you could choose to sit there for a while or you could choose to go into small surplus and keep increasing your calories, keep taking back that cardio until it's pretty much like non-existent and then from there, see where you're at, take some progress photos, and then you can start a slow shred again, but only introduce cardio when you feel that you need it later down the track. So a reverse diet, there's a lot of information online about that, and I think that is a really good way to kind of look after yourself after a shred, or if you're in the situation in which you're trying to shred, but you're just not losing the fat, and you know that you're in a caloric deficit. Shans. Can't train for two weeks, lost 18 kilos since January, maximum five kilos to go. If I eat in a deficit and 10,000 steps, okay. Yes, yeah, so if you have an injury or you have a situation in which you're really busy and you just physically cannot get to the gym and you can't exercise for whatever reason it is, you will still lose fat if you're in a caloric deficit. Of course, exercising is an awesome thing for shaping your body and for overall health benefits, but from a fat loss point of view, you can totally lose fat without going to the gym and without exercising purely from nutrition. So yeah, if you're moving, hitting your 10,000 steps a day and you're in a caloric 
calorie deficit girl you will lose fat but of course it would be more effective if you could get to the gym and do some weight training or do some circuits and things at home last question from Ali how do you stay consistent so this is a really good question the number one thing that I have found over the past few years on my fitness journey is that consistency is one of the biggest things that will help you achieve your goals you could be so good with your nutrition and your training for a week and be so on point but then if the next week you completely go off like on the opposite end of the spectrum and you're eating like crazy and you're not going to the gym and you're eating excess amount of calories then of course you're going to like take two steps back so for me it's kind of more about progression not perfection and I always stress this to the squad I don't want you to try and be perfect every single week I don't want you to say like you know I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week I'm going to eat to my macros exactly to a T every single day I would far rather you just say you know what I'm going to take it day by day and I'm going to do my best every single day and consistently do that long term say for a year as opposed to being like I'm going all in this week and then going all out the next week so consistency hard work patience pay off with those three qualities alongside nutrition and effective weight training you will achieve your results so for me consistency isn't always easy there's times where I don't want to go to the gym or I do genuinely just want to go out and eat everything in sight but it comes down to me having a clear understanding of my goals what I want to achieve uh, in the short term as well as in the long term and I get a lot of motivation from progression so seeing myself progress really motivates and inspires inspires me to keep going. If you are someone that struggles with consistency, I do recommend getting a plan for your training and your nutrition. That way you don't have to overthink everything. Everything you need is going to be there right in front of you. All you need to do is go and do it and just tick off each day as it is. Take it day by day. Don't worry about how long it's going to take you to achieve your goals. Just focus on the now. Enjoy the journey and slay those goals. The consistency thing is so important, but it's much easier to do when you have a plan in place with goals that you're working towards so I hope that this video helped you guys I am so so excited for the shred I can't wait to take you along the journey I'll show you my current update in one of my videos I guess sometime this month I'll show you where I'm at uh, talk about my goals a little bit more but for now it is time for me to go get some food because it's lunchtime as always if you did enjoy this video please remember to like comment subscribe and smile